Nebraska's third congressional district is number one for agriculture, and the candidates sound off. Ahead on GROW, where they stand on farm policy. And ethanol, one of those policies in flux. We'll hear from a local farmer who says the worst case scenario could be devastating. Plus, resources bring hope for farmers managing stress. Get ready to grow. <laughs> Welcome to the program. Thanks for joining us this Easter. We start tonight with the third district congressional debate. Third district candidates Adrian Smith, Kirk Penner, and Aaron Kowalski answered our questions. When asked about some of the most important things in the next farm bill, this is what they said. The most important thing we need to keep is crop insurance. Crop insurance, as I've engaged with, with producers uh, over the last several months talking about this next farm bill, I've asked them, and, and uh, certainly I, I uh, have been working on this even in addition to that, but hearing from them directly of how important crop insurance is. Crop insurance actually prevents the need for ad hoc disaster payments, and so taxpayers can benefit from a strong crop insurance program. I, do, I would agree, crop insurance is vital uh, in the Farm Bill. Now, there are a lot of people in Washington, D.C. that want to get rid of the Farm Bill when the agriculture side is only about 13%. So crop insurance is critical. I, I think uh, trade, and we may get a trade question, I, I support doubling the FMD and the MAP, the, the market access program and the foreign market development program. Trade is essential. Those are key. Uh, hopefully later we can get into a discussion of country of origin labeling that I'd love to talk about for the beef industry. Unlike the two of them, I actually directly benefit from our crop insurance. So. This is pretty near and dear to my heart, and it does need to be expanded, I think, as well as simplified. But another issue I'd like to make with the current Farm Bill is why is the SNAP program even in any of this? That's not agriculture's responsibility. That should go to a more relevant organization completely. This is just unnecessary bureaucracy. You could cut that out of that program and send it into another one that actually already helps the poor and the needy. The fourth Republican candidate, Larry Bollinger, was unable to attend but is still running. You can watch the full debate on Nebraska.tv. Now to ethanol, where farmers push for a strong RFS in the face of pressure from the oil industry. Corn and soybeans help fuel America with a national policy requiring renewable fuels to be used. But ethanol and oil are fighting over market share as the highway of tomorrow looks very different. You're going to be looking at maybe less liquid fuel being used than we are today, whether it's electric vehicles coming on or fuel efficiency getting better so the cars get better gas mileage. Wales state senators like Ted Cruz say the renewable fuel standard is broken and say jobs at oil refineries are at stake. In his words, quote, these are blue collar working class jobs, the kind that are the backbone of our economy, the kind that keep refineries going. But corn growers fear one proposed solution would immediately cut ethanol consumption by a billion gallons a year. And that would, would literally destroy the Midwest. Just back from D.C., a Cambridge farmer fears changes to ethanol policy would hit rural Nebraska hard. Uh, we need those young people in our communities, and we need the economic engine that was ethanol to help fund our communities. And it comes at a time when farm income is on the decline. Calculated to be about a 25 cent per bushel hit on already depriced corn prices. And you can figure what that's going to happen to Main Street, Nebraska trying to sell tractors and pivots and things like that. So ethanol backers urged the president to honor his commitments. To make sure Congress and the Trump administration hear from middle America. Now we head to the state capitol where the governor brings in farm groups to back his tax plan. But will it be enough to get it past the finish line? This bill is our chance, our best opportunity to be able to pass the tax relief Nebraskans are looking for this year. Farm and business groups stand with the governor in support of tax relief. LB 947 remains the best and only option that provides substantial property tax relief. The governor's plan would cut corporate income tax rates and also addresses property taxes on the home and farm, delivering $4.5 billion in relief over the next 10 years through a credit applied towards income taxes. 
starting off at 2% for ag land and 1% from homeowners, but going to 20% so that we can increase the amount of tax relief there, as well as bringing down our business tax rates to match our individual income tax rates. I don't call that substantial upfront or immediate. Some say it's little relief for farmers. I think I've been pretty consistent all along that I don't support it because it doesn't do enough upfront and it doesn't do it fast enough and it doesn't address school funding. The governor's bill also faces resistance from school leaders and farm groups are split over it. The pork producers are taking a pragmatic approach in their support. LB 947 has come out of committee and we believe it's got the best chance of making it uh, to the finish line. Farm Bureau 2 endorses the plan, even if the relief would be phased in. It is still significant property tax relief, far more than we've had uh, before us in a number of years. And so it's, I think it's important that senators consider their vote here and that, that they see this vote as a step forward. In the governor also visiting central Nebraska this past week, pushing for that tax plan. He visited Aurora, the district of Senator Kurt Friesen, one of those opposed to his plan. The governor says he's bringing together urban and rural. We haven't had our ag business groups and our urban business groups on the same page with uh, regard to tax relief probably in decades. So we are making progress on coming up with a bill that will allow us to meet the needs of folks across the state to be able to get that property tax relief done. A banker at the meeting said other plans deliver relief faster. However, the governor says his plan has the support and should be the one to go forward. We've got a bill here that doesn't raise anybody's taxes to be able to deliver up to a 20% refundable tax credit on all the property taxes you pay and be able to do that in a way that's manageable within the budget. So we certainly want to make sure we get everybody on board. This will certainly help out our ag producers and of course here in Hamilton County, that's a big deal. And it looks like folks are split on the governor's plan. We've definitely got mixed results on our most recent poll question between those who say it's better than nothing and at least provides some relief. While many think it's too little, too late, we'll keep tracking this, so stay tuned. Nationally, soybean acres are expected to top corn for the first time in decades. Here in Nebraska, corn growers intend to plant 9.3 million acres in 2018, down 3% from the last year, according to the USDA. Soybean acres down 2% at an expected 5.6 million acres. Across Nebraska, farmers are expected to harvest 2.7 million acres of hay. That's up 3% from the past year. The USDA says winter wheat acres in the state dropping to an all-time low, 1.07 million acres, down 4% from last year's record low. Sorghum, the state's fourth most popular crop, with an expected increase of 11% in acres, 200,000 acres of milo expected to be planted. Later, we'll share resources to manage stress on the farm. Up next, what one local farmer says you can do to support ethanol. Hi, I'm Steve Wellman, Nebraska's Director of Agriculture, and you're watching NTV's Grow.